Hey guys, Jim Brotherton here. In this video, I'll show you how I upgraded the solar on my 2005 StarCraft pop-up. I think it will be helpful for my next project where I convert this system to lithium. In this project, I'm installing four new 50 watt solar panels, tying them into the solar charge controller, showing you how I wired the 12 volt lead acid batteries in parallel, why I'm using a shunt and how to tie in a battery monitor, cabling the whole system with MC4 solar connectors and a 10 gauge wire, and feeding the power center to power the pop-ups DC system. So today I'm adding 200 watts of additional solar panels to my pop-up here. The current system that we have installed already is two BP or British Petroleum 125 watt panels producing a total of 250 watts. And we've realized that it's just not enough to dry camp or boondock and we're drawing more amp hours from the battery bank every 24 hours and the panels can recharge in five to eight hours of sun. So we're adding four of these Renogy 50 watt panels to get an, a total of 450 watts and we think this is going to be enough for us to um, boondock or dry camp. The solar panels feed this 12 volt battery bank wired together in parallel. Parallel gives you the ability to pull your battery bank amp hours as if they're one giant battery storage that keeps the output at 12 volts. We're also using a 40 amp pulse width modulator charge controller to maintain the battery charge. We've integrated this shunt here, which ties all the DC appliances and electronics and runs through this to reach the negative side of the battery so that we can integrate this battery monitor that monitors the health of the batteries. Okay, so I've placed that uh, these two 50 watt panels on the top of the camper. And one thing to note about a camper like this is that it is actually designed to have water runoff, so it's not perfectly flat. So you'll see that there is some airspace under here, and that's uh, for two reasons. One is because uh, solar creates heat, and heat reduces the efficiency of a solar panel, so we want some airflow under here, as well as the fact that this in the middle of this camper is the peak, and it uh, slopes off from there. Okay, so we're gonna put these two panels on either side of the camper here, and the first thing that we're gonna wanna do, measure out the length that of the cable to connect over here on this panel and then we'll run from this front as a full home run single home run over to the battery okay so we have chosen a 10 gauge uh, zippered cable and so it's black and red and so that helps us indicate or signify that we're using a dc system this is solar panel cable this should be sufficient for the amount of power that we're sending over to our batteries we're going to take this and create jumpers creating multiple little jumper cables at various lengths because my panels will be installed at various lengths from the branch connectors. So the idea here is that from all the panels, I will consolidate into these branch connectors here for the six panels. Those will consolidate down to a single cable that comes out and runs to our charge controller. So this is really called the female. This connector uses the larger of the two metal inserts and inside they slip in together and create the connection. So the larger one goes with what's called the female here and then the smaller one uh, will go with this um, opening open connector which is the male. So we disconnect or unscrew this cable gland which creates a compression and a water seal connection on the cable and first what we want to do strip the cable to give enough cable exposure to crimp and get a good crimp connection onto the metal insert. So I'm going to crimp off some cable here. That should be sufficient. I like to twist it. What I'm going to do a little different is because I've made jumper cables, what I really want to do is match my colors here. So the power of positive comes through and comes out, which means that um, it looks like I'm going to be using this to connect 
here. So I'm gonna attach this uh, female connector first. So that means I start with sliding the cable gland on, and then I insert the cable. What we wanna do is get just enough cable into the metal insert. We then take the crimpers and put the open mouth at this open side here and the bottom on this uh, rounded side. What this is gonna do is squeeze these together in a ratchet formation. You wanna go all the way down until it closes, release, and now you've got a really solid crimp here. This is not gonna let go. Then what we wanna do is make sure the grommet is in. Oops, wrong one. We would learn that quickly. Slide it over the connection, and what you're waiting for, what you're looking for here is a snap. And now you know it's in. And then it's 104 degrees here today, excuse me. You tighten this on. There's tools that come with this, but I find that hand tightening it is just sufficient as um, using the tool. And you've got now a water seal tight connection, and you've got the female connector terminated. Okay, just for consistency here, we'll do the other termination of this cable. We'll strip it. I like to twist it again to give myself uh, a really strong, uniform connection. We use the big one on the female. Again, I'll put the cable gland on first. It's n maybe not necessary, but a lot of times these will be too big for it to slide over in other termination types. So I'm gonna hold it there. One th something I didn't show in the last one really helps is if you push tension on it this way. And then again, I'm going to use this middle slot because that's what I found works the best on this. I'm gonna put it on like this and we wanna crimp this all the way down. And the, the tool really does all the work for you. See, there we have a good solid connection. Again, we're gonna listen for the snap. We can see this coming through here. There we go, the snap. Tighten down. Got a cable gland to get a good seal. And there we have it. Both of these terminated now. So I'm gonna replace these black cables, re-terminate these panels. So I'm gonna disconnect them both. Uh, replace this black cable here and bring it over here uh, again to this junction, these connectors, um, and then run a single run down to my battery. So there it is, all connected into the MC4 branch connectors. Now I haven't mounted the solar panels yet because I wanted to make sure that first and foremost, all the wires were cut and installed at the proper lengths. And now that I have that done, I can mount and physically mount the panels. To mount these additional panels, I'm using aluminum 90 degree angle bracket. I'm just gonna cut it to size and then mount it using this uh, top line to level it. I'm using sheet metal screws to attach it. Uh, and basically it's creating feet on all four sides. To mount these panels, we're using 3M BHB double-sided outdoor all-weather tape. These This very strong adhesive. And to help it out, we're using a lot of surface area so we don't have to perforate this roof. With the tape, my one concern was on this very front panel with the amount of airflow at speed being towed. As this thing gets wind, the tape starts coming free a little bit. And I'm afraid that there's gonna be some point of critical mass basically that pulls the panel off. For a solution, I'm gonna reinforce again with tape these corners on this side and this side where it catches the most wind. That should prevent this issue. We're also moving the uh, brackets to the front where we know that we have most of the wind resistance when, when driving versus the sides where these are. All right, guys, next step is to uh, line these panels and uh, apply the tape. Again, for me, surface area is king. So I'm gonna get a 20 inch strip on this panel, a little eight inch strip on the side over here. And again, a 20 inch strip over here. Um, I'm gonna clean everything with alcohol, but well, since it's COVID and there is no rubbing alcohol, uh, I'm using Everclear. 
We're looking to take uh, get rid of all the dirt and grime and oils that might be on this aluminum uh, and the surface uh, so that we get a really good adhesion from the glue. Uh, here we're looking at a Schneider Electric uh, charge uh, load controller for solar systems. Um, this is the 40 amp version, controller version, that works in 12, 24, and 48 models. So you can uh, adjust it based on what uh, voltage configuration you're looking for. I'm using 12 volts. Um, I have here my battery bank. These are standard marine batteries from Everstart. I just picked them up at Walmart. I think for the cost and affordability, uh, these worked great for me. Uh, in the past, they lasted five years. Um, the set did. I have four 12 volt batteries wired in parallel. I'm using battery terminal cables to tie the positive terminals together and the negative terminals together. Parallel keeps the voltage the same at 12 volts. If I were to wire in series, connecting the positive to negative, the voltage would be 12 plus 12 to output 24 volts for two batteries. Adding a third battery would output 36 volts and so on. Since I want this to be a 12 volt system and I'm more interested in the continuous load drainage from small devices and appliances, I'm looking for more amp draw over time or more amp draw storage. So parallel is better for me. Wiring in parallel allows me to combine amp hour storage time. Each of these batteries state that they have 122 amp hours of storage. However, since they are lead acid batteries, they cannot be drained below 50% of their total power or they'll fail. So, although it looks like I have in total 488 amp hours of battery storage, I really only have half of that at 244 amp hours. So this is the solar charge controller. It's the C40 model. I'm gonna open this up, disconnect the existing solar connections because if you'll remember, I'm upgrading the cables that are running to this, to the new ones. So we're just gonna pull this open. I'm going to disconnect the old wires and reconnect the new ones. But as I do this, you'll get a chance to see what the inside of this thing looks like and how simple it is to use. Okay, so I've got those screwed in. You'll notice that on the PCB here, on this printed circuit board, that these guys have this labeled for you. So you can see this as positive PV here and negative over here. The other two connections tie into your battery. So one to the positive and one to the negative of your battery bank. I have mine tying in to the closest battery, positive and negative. To monitor the state of the health of the battery, I'm using this Bogart Engineering Trimetric 2030 RV battery monitor. I really, although it does a lot of things, I really like it for three things. It tells us the battery voltage and battery's current state, the amp draw of what's drawing against it, and how much we have until the battery's drained down to that 50% mark that kills our lead acid batteries. To use one of these, you need a shunt. So Bogart Engineering specifies which ones you need, either 500 amp, 50 millivolt, or 100 amp, 100 millivolt shunt. Um, and you can see the ranges here. Using a shunt, you'll tie one side to the, your 12 volt negative. The other side brings all your 12 volt DC devices in. Here's a quick illustration showing how various devices uh, in the pop-up or in your RV will tie into the shunt and how the shunt ties into the battery. Of course, all these have a power center, so let's look at it with the power center. So the power center is actually powering the devices, but on the negative side, you run it to the shunt, and then the shunt to the battery, and you power up the power center. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe if that feels right. Check out my other videos. There are plenty more to come.